What have we learned today about this breach at Facebook? Sure, thanks for having me on, Brad. Uh, what we've learned today is that Facebook had a really nasty network uh, intrusion into potentially 50 million people's Facebook accounts. Now, to put that into context, you hear a lot of big numbers around cybersecurity. Uh, Yahoo lost 3 billion accounts. Hundreds of millions of accounts get compromised via credit cards and things like that. 50 million for Facebook is not a huge number on its own, but the type of access these hackers were able to gain, which was full account takeover, is what makes this really significant. And the mechanism they used, it was essentially a flaw in Facebook's coding that allowed them to effectively you know, look up an account, steal an access token to that account, and log in as the user. As, for social, social media breaches, this is kind of as bad as it gets. Jordan, let's compare it to the Cambridge Analytica breach that was revealed earlier this year, probably better known at this point. Uh, you know, those, uh, you know, hackers, for lack of a better word, had access to a user's public profile, right? If that was inadvertently shared by one of their friends who took one of those famous quizzes. You know, how does, how does the scale and the scope of this attack compare to what happened earlier in the year? Right. Yeah. You know, I watched the Cambridge Analytica stuff. We obviously covered a lot of it. Uh, and some of it was a little puzzling to me because, you know, what those researchers were able to scrape, which they weren't allowed to scrape, but what they're able to scrape is, as you say, public data from people's Facebook, public Facebook profiles. So the reason people went so crazy about that is because of what that data was used for, which was the successful election campaign of Donald Trump. What Facebook has disclosed today, again, and I can't stress this enough, is that this hack allowed the attackers to access fully uh, a potentially up to 50 million people's accounts. That means log in as them, send messages as them, download all the photos, access contact lists. That's really, really nasty stuff. Facebook works very hard to prevent people from logging into accounts that don't belong to them. And this flaw in their coding allowed, it ha allowed hackers to access potentially as many 50 million, 50 million people's accounts. It's nasty stuff. Brian, let me turn to you over the phone. I think it's fair to say you have not been the most optimistic analyst about Facebook's prospects this year. You have a negative rating on the stock. I, I imagine today's news does very little to change your perception. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, and it's so hard to say if uh, this could have happened to anyone uh, with uh, uh, a platform like Facebook. Um, but it's safe to say that um, I have been cataloging and rolling up uh, over the last two years what I've called a, a taxonomy of mismanagement, um, where there's all these little things which collectively roll up into a pretty obvious picture that the company is not well managed, full stop. And I don't think investors appreciate that yet. Um, something like this will have essentially no commercial consequences, I don't think. Um, you know, I don't think uh, by itself it's not going to cause advertisers to stop spending money. Um, it's not like um, you know fines, if there were any, uh, that might follow from this would be you know enough to, to you know uh, dent uh, put a dent in them. Um, but where I think there 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 actually could be some consequences um, uh, from a, a, an overall a, a business model perspective is that you know have they been skirting on costs uh, in order to uh, you know break stuff and move fast essentially. Um, and I think that that's, you know, whether you look at um, the absence of content moderation uh, in, you know, to make sure that people aren't getting killed in a genocide in Myanmar or making sure that um, Instagram isn't recommending child abuse videos or make sure that they actually know who their customers are and whether or not they're violating uh, various laws related to advertising. They've automated so much stuff and haven't baked in enough process to actually uh, ensure that problems don't happen on a persistent basis. They barely, barely begun to account for the costs that they will need to incur to make sure that the business is uh, run to prevent as much as plausible this sort of thing. Um, but even then, it just doesn't seem like they're making a lot of great choices. Right. Well, they have talked about uh, doubling their security staff to 20,000 people, Brian. But what, so what you're saying, though, is we perhaps don't know the impact that that will have on the business model. I think the bigger problem is I don't trust that when they say they need 20,000 people that that's the right number. Um, you know, I, 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 it, it, because even having, they need 2,500 people in Germany alone to look for Holocaust denial. Like, is 20,000 going to be enough to cover the world? I doubt it. 
Jordan, let me ask you one last final question. I was one of those 90 million Facebook users who got automatically logged out of Facebook last night. Uh, they took that as a precaution. If you, if you find out you were impacted by this hack, what do you do? Well, I think, as you say, Facebook has actually been very proactive in disclosing this breach. I mean, it wasn't long ago that they discovered it. Uh, they were proactive in, uh, in changing the, uh, the access tokens for up to 90 million people, as you say. So I think that's all really good. I think that's a positive step. The, the, you know, in terms of what you're supposed to do, I think the, the bigger lesson from a lot of these breaches needs to be, you know, a lot of focus is paid to, well, did anybody steal my data? Did they steal my messages? Did they do these things? These are nation state hackers, typically, that will, will expect spend the kind of resources to do these types of attacks. So the bigger question needs to be, if somebody accesses your account to spy on you, you know, would they get what they're looking for? Do you share so much information with these social media companies that if a foreign spy were to look at your account, would they get what they're looking for? Uh, you know, and if you, if you hold some information back from these companies, uh, you know, you can maintain a sense of privacy while still enjoying the platforms. But in terms of the security protocols, they've done a good job. Okay, important point scary that, stuff. Uh, just because they let oh, the, sorry, go ahead, Brian, quickly. Sorry, yeah, sorry to interrupt, but uh, an important point, I don't think they get brownie points for letting consumers know uh, within three days, because under GDPR, if they did not within 72 hours and there's any Europeans in there, the fines would have been massive. Uh, this is mission critical for any company to have, they have to let consumers know within 72 hours.